and yeah. we have to get ourselves ready to maximize the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, what I say to people is that you have to uh, kind of prepare for anything, uh, just like now, <laughs> you know, uh, because of the technical issue, I didn't know that uh, <laughs> we'll come on here. So yes. you have to... Uh, you have to be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> but we got there at the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you have to be very prepared because we say that when uh, preparation meets opportunity, then you have success. Mm. You know. Uh, so it's always very, very important for you to know that times are very important. That's the reason why it is um, a very, very imperative for you to have a, a plan, a schedule, you know, that you, 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 you actually work on mm. as per what you want to achieve in life your goals mm. you know uh, I, I was uh, i do life coaching a lot and i was coaching a lady uh, one of the things i told her is that so she was very as haphazard in uh, what she's planning to do i said well, look here time no, doesn't wait for anyone just to be deliberate in what you want to do mm. put pen to paper list as many one of the first thing i told her i said come on don't be afraid to list as many items as possible that you feel you can achieve, mm. something you want to see in your life. Mm. Then by the time we meet together, we'll be able to look at them, you know, analyze them mm. and actually put them together and make it one thing first. Mm. Because uh, you have to be a person of one thing. That one thing can branch into several things, mm. you understand? Mm. But you have to be a person of one thing first. So time... Uh, and, and space and season are very, very important. They are, uh, if you permit me, they are elements or devices by which uh, life itself uses to bring us into uh, some kind of influence and significance if we use them very well. Mm. But if they are not used very well, if they are not uh, uh, appropriated very well, people, that's the reason why they say, oh, people lost time. Uh, people lost this. Uh, people lost that. Have you not had, uh, you know? But, but if I may interrupt you, if if you if you lose that chance, that opportunity at that time, can you uh -huh. get it back? Yes. You see, um, you can get it back, uh, but you see, life is about season. Mm. Seasons of life. You might have to go and kill for that time for that opportunity. Mm. Uh, it's never lost. You see, if you pass. We have four seasons in the UK now. We have, uh, we have uh, uh, winter, summer, autumn, spring, isn't it? Yeah. So, and if you lost something in winter, and it's only in winter you can get it, you understand? You have to wait for another winter to come mm. for you to get that. Thing. Not that it's going to be lost forever. Like seasons are in circles. Yeah. You understand? And that's the reason why I always tell people that I coach. If it's not enough, to have opportunity, always be uh, very prepared to recognize opportunities. Because the opportunities you don't recognize, you cannot maximize. So it is always very, very important for somebody to have that preparation of heart, yeah. preparation of mind. Um, uh, I mean, we, we have talked before on this uh, platform about uh, giving yourself both formal and informal education, mm. upskill yourself mm. in a way that you can uh, actually uh, present yourself for that opportunity that is going to come to your way in the near future. So, opportunity lost mm. can, I mean, cannot be forever. So, so how do That's we position always, ourselves to take advantage you know, of, of that opportunity? I mean, we've got two, exactly. two minutes. Just I want to be positioned. Yeah. yeah. How do we uh, do uh, that? Let me say this quickly before you go, because I know yeah. my time is going now. What I want to say there is this. You see, when when people, maybe you lost an opportunity, they, 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 they one has to be very deliberate as to looking at don't just lose opportunity and move on and say okay another one will come look at your life what why did you not maximize the opportunity what happened at that particular point in time what do you need to do in the near future never to miss such an opportunity mm. who do you need to meet what do you need to read what book do you need to read what skills do you need to have so that is what we make you to be prepared for another opportunity because you see, when you are prepared for an opportunity, it is very, very important that when it comes, you will see it. Opportunity you don't prepare for, when it's around you, you don't see it. Mm. I 
I like that because it's like it's like the saying when you set your mind to do something, that's when you begin to see people that will help you to get to where you need to get to. That's right. That's right. Amazing. Thank you so much. Please, how can my viewers get in touch with you in case they need to reach you? Sorry? How can the viewers get in touch with you in case they need to reach you? You you can reach me on pastordami at gmail.com. Pastordami at gmail.com. That is my email <laughs> email address. Or they could just type your, your name on, on Facebook and they'll get... A... Okay, I'm going to do that. Um, you see, you see that? I, I, I'm going to do that. I, I will type it on, on, the, on the show now. Amazing. And uh, for, uh, I mean, for... For any data protection stuff, uh, I don't know whether I can release my phone to you. Uh, you, for, can, you can put it on the you can put it on the link, and people can oh, get okay. in touch with you. Uh, uh, because All right. People okay. can okay. Well, if they, they, they don't watch now. They can definitely watch carry on watching for the next 10, 15 years. So that okay. number is going to be the same. So thank you so much. That's right. That's right. And, thank and, you and so much for the time and for the opportunity. I really appreciate. It. Thank you so much, Pat. Have a good All one. All right. Have a good show. Bye bye. You too. Bye. Bye. Okay, amazing. Uh, great, we're talking about chances, and he talked about, we just spoke with uh, Timothy, and Timothy is talking about, there, he spoke about that if we lose an opportunity, don't just sit there idle and hope that the opportunity is going to come back. You have to put the work in. You have to put the work in, you have to make the effort, uh, uh, and you have to look at, assess yourself to say, listen, what did I, not, wha what did I do wrong to miss that opportunity? Why was I not able to maximize that opportunity? These are all the questions that we have to ask ourselves and not just sit back and wait and hope that heaven is just going to fall down on our laps. Do you understand? Right, we're giving our next guest a call. Uh, hi, it's Ronnie here. you live on there. How are you? Hello, hello. I'm good, I'm good. And how are you? Amazing. I am, I'm calm now. All is well. So we're going. We're rocking. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, well done. Thank well you. Done. Please introduce yourself and, and we can continue. Fantastic. Uh, my name is Dr. Daniel Tenyo. I am a lifestyle specialist and uh, I do a whole lot of other things as well. But I'm passionate about um, helping my community. Uh, right now, I'm actually working on an initiative uh, along with my uh, Botswana community. We're working on... Um, we're, we're raising funds to provide food for families in Botswana who cannot afford to feed themselves because of the COVID-19 um, lockdown. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put the link uh, here on the on, on this uh, live um, show so that people who want to reach out or who want to donate to help us, they can Fantastic. do so. All right, thank you so much. So what are we? What's your opinion about the topic that we're talking about today? Life and tides waits for no one. Uh, great. My opinion is this. Uh, like I said last week, things don't happen to you. You make things happen. I believe opportunities are all around us. All we have to do is be mindful, be aware, because everything that you look for, you will find. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. Mm. I, like that, yeah. I like that saying. <laughs> So in, in a <laughs> yes. situation whereby um, there's a saying that always says, do opportunities only knock once? Do you do you believe in that? What? Opportunities fall at, at once? No, opportunities only knock once. Ah, opportunities. No, I don't believe opportunities knock once. I believe opportunities are there all the time. All the time. You just have to be mindful. You just have to... Uh, to open your mind and you will see that because uh, in life you've got to know what you want so what do you want ask and it is given so when uh, when you're ready for the opportunity it is always there. it will appear you will get it you know i believe in the law of attraction hmm. ask believe receive hmm. so yeah what, so, what, so go ahead uh -huh. So we, we ask all the time, and we are given all the time. So it's just that when we say we missed an opportunity, uh, this means that we were not ready for, for that, or it wasn't meant for us at that time, because everything happens for a reason. Mm. 
Yeah. But but it could be when you say when we miss an opportunity that we may maybe we were not ready or it wasn't the right time, but it could have been the <laughs> right time. It could have been that that uh, as you said we, were, we we just did not prepare ourselves to take advantage of that opportunity at that particular time. So when are we going to get in that same position again? That's that's my my worry. Uh, you will. You know, I like what I just said, that um, seasons are, uh, they, they, they are in circles all the time. Mm. Time is never lost. So you're not going to lose anything because it will come again. So if you ask for something, just know that, just believe that it is already yours. Mm. So it will come when you're ready for it. So you've got to align yourself with what you've asked for. That what means- you want to You've got to align, yeah. align, yeah. so that they could, like what we said last week is an inside job. Mm. So basically, you've got to be ready to receive. You've got to be in in the receiving mode. Yeah, in 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 the vortex. That's what Abraham uh, would say. You know, be in the vortex, be in the now, be in the uh, be mindful because it will come. Mm. Just know that it is already yours. Just be prepared. For the next blessing, because it will be on its way. So, simply put, what what you're saying in a nutshell, basically, is we need to build our capacity to be ready yes. to take advantage of something that we're planning or we're hoping to to do. Exactly, exactly. Be prepared, because uh, you know there are no coincidences in life. What you ask, you receive. Like I said, hmm. so you know there is. I believe there is no missed opportunity because it will already be there. Just be ready for it, because you will get it. Mm-hmm. Whatever you ask, it will be on its way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do, you mean, what do you mean you believe that there is no missed opportunity? Explain that a bit. No, there is no missed opportunity. If you think that it is missed, or if you think that, okay, it's gone, that was not the right time, you are not ready. Your inner self know the right time and knows the opportunity, it, it knows what you want. Mm. You know, it knows what you've asked for. If it comes and it looks like it's not, it, you're not getting it or you're missing it, it, it is not the right, you're not aligned. You know, you're not ready for it. But it will come. Just get ready by being prepared. <laughs> so what are, the, what are the simple ways that you think that we can, we can get ready to take advantage of opportunities around us? Um, to be ready is to be, about, to live in the now. Live in the now. Hmm. You know, whatever, like I, I said, whatever you want, it's there already. Be mindful, be aware of your surrounding, be aware of where you are, what you're doing. This is the technique I use hmm. because, you know, Whenever I, um, like I said earlier, I believe opportunities are all around us, mm-hmm. you make things happen. Basically, you've got to be ready for everything. If you want to be successful in life, in life you have to have the motivation and the passion to overcome all the ob- obstacles between you and your vision for your future. But you can only do that if you're prepared. You can only do that if you're in the now, if you're aware, if you're mindful. You know, Ed Paul says, be in the now. This is how you get prepared mm. to receive what you've asked for. So, so in summary, uh, 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 we have to make sure that if we're planning to be to run a business and we need people to help up in help us in that particular business we need to make sure that we've educated ourselves and we have trained ourselves to in a position that when we are in that particular position we can take advantage of it basically exactly trust me it's an easy job when you are already aligned inside because the most you know the, the most preparedness comes from within and then outside everything works you know you Getting your team ready, getting yourself ready will feel like um, an easy job because you've already done the hard work inside. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Yes. 
I'm just yeah. trying to avoid so we, where, where uh, people who, who are listening think that they can yeah. just sit down and just say the word and say it, say it, say it, and it will just by a miracle just happen. Because that doesn't happen. You have to work hard for it. Uh, no, no, you've got to take action because nothing happened. You've got to make it happen. By, by taking action, mm. then, you know, the, the universe gives you, you know, already what you want, but you're not going to just, it, it's like confusing wishful thinking and, uh, you know, actually doing the work. You know, that's just wishing things will happen and you think things will just uh, um, happen. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. You still have to take that step towards things happening. Amazing. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Truss. It's always a, a pleasure to have you and thanks for your understanding as well. Uh, always amazing. Always amazing. Thank you. Always a pleasure. And thank you to all the listeners. And uh, yes, I'll put the link. Thank yes, you please. so much. And, and all your fantastic you friends in Zimbabwe. And all, <laughs> I say hello to you all. Have a good one. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 Fantastic. So please. If you're watching, uh, Trust is going to leave the link below. Uh, just try and give a donation to help the people in Zimbabwe uh, during these very difficult times. Every little penny that we can raise makes a big difference to uh, help each person. Okay, next, our next guest, we've got Sabrina. And we're talking about life and tides waits for nobody. And one thing you don't want to do is just sit there and then just be, you're being positive, and you're just say, saying it. Hi, Sabrina, you're live on there. How are you? Hi, everyone. I'm good, thank you. I'm out in the park. I don't know if there's any background noise here. No, nah, it's good, it's good. We just turned oh, my, my volume up. Hope, you, hope you're keeping social distancing. No, why would I do that? That's <laughs> absurd. <laughs> oh, come on. We, we're, we're social creatures. That's the least I would do. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Please tell us about you, Sabrina, before we go on. Mm. Sure. Um, so my name's Sabrina Ben Salmi. I am a business and personal development consultant. And one of my passions is to inspire families to work on their family empire together. Fantastic. Today we're talking about life and tides wait for no one. Could you give us your opinion on the topic? Just repeat that again, please, Ronnie. I didn't life hear you. and tides wait for no one. Oh, yeah. Well, I like to say that the sea is always there. There's always waves. They come and go, you know, the ebbs and flow of life. So I think my, when I got the questions from you, one of the things that I thought I would love to share with the listeners is that it's never too late. It's important to take opportunities. Don't get me wrong. But I, feel, I think there's this ethos of it's gone now. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, the sea's there. You know, there's always waves. Yes, it's always good to catch the big waves. But it's never too late. Mm. So do opportunities that we miss today, does opportunity only knock once? Um, contextual. I would say that it's really contextual for individuals. So like I ask you as a listener to really reflect on what that might mean for you. So if I look in my own, into my own personal life, they have these sayings that the the teacher will appear when the student's ready. And I like to live my life with those belief systems is that when we look back at the times when we so-called missed it, did we have the correct infrastructure support system to help us to activate? Because the truth is that when something shows up and it's aligned, there's so much flow. There's no resistance. There's no struggle. There's such flow. Mm. And am I saying that you just sit still and wait for it? No. It's, it really is a case of how can we get prepared and stay prepared? Um, I think that we are in a beautiful universe that we get to call life. Mm -hmm. I think it's a buffet of life. And I think when we look at buffets, the choices are always there. But the question that we need to ask ourselves is what vibration, what version of us do we need to become in order to see the array, the plethora of opportunities that are in our lives all day, every day? Because, you know, often what we're looking for is right on our doorstep. You know, we could travel the world, say, you know, what's that one thing? What's that void? And we come back home, we go, wow, what I've been looking for is right here inside of me. Hmm. How, how, so how do we position ourselves to take advantage of these opportunities? Um, transparency. Being real with yourself. Look at, your, I believe that life will always give us feedback. I believe that life is a journey of market research and what we choose to do with it is up to us. So I think that how we can be ready and stay ready for opportunities is by just finding out who are we, who am I, 
if we can go on that journey of self-discovery as early as possible and we can start thinking what where do i get the most joy where do i find the most flow what's my my truth mm. and surround myself around people that are living breathing example of that which i desire to create i feel that that's what's important but also speaking verbalizing see i don't know what's going on in your head until you tell me so the chances are our, our own best worst enemy is ourselves because we're not we 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 tell ourselves we're not good enough we don't have enough and i'll do it when i get the right money the right mm. situation mm. where you could just choose to be it now you don't need to have all of those things in your life that you think you do. It's just the case that you need to start getting good at verbalizing. And from the verbalization, heaven, will, heaven and earth will move, literally. One of the dangers that I'm trying to uh, uh, explain to my, to my audience so they don't get misconstrued is by verbalizing something and by saying something and not taking any action, doesn't move, doesn't move, doesn't move the goalposts. I think it's amazing that you've actually talked about that. It, it depends. So contextually, verbalizing is many different things. And when I'm talking about verbalization, it's a case of this is where I am. Mm. This is what I know I desire to do. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. I need your skills. Here's the thing. Do you know someone that does this? So it's, it's not what we're saying. It's how we're saying it. You're quite right. If I'm just saying I'm going to do this mammoth thing and, and next year you see me and I say again, I'm going to. We all know people in our lives. And sometimes it's us that sit in the seat that know that we keep saying that but mm. that's why i say that the first step is about you being honest with yourself what are your fears what are the underlying belief systems that are stopping you from going on because the truth is for order for that action to take place we have to understand that there are belief systems that hold us where we are this isn't the case of you know you're being lazy you're procrastinating you're making excuses no it's not as simple as that it all goes back to our program and it all goes back into our environment it's not fair that if John comes from a family that's active and, and they work together and it's cohesive, they've got finances, and then me comparing myself going, well, I don't have nothing. And people just say I'm making excuses. We all have different challenges. And some often, more so than not, our biggest challenge is ourselves. So in, 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 in a roundabout way, if we, if we miss those opportunities when or we're, not ready, we're not ready to take those opportunities at that time, how can mm. we, what do we now do when we miss those opportunities in, in, in reference to kicking yourself or getting depressed mm. and, 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 and what do you do at that point? Be vulnerable. You know, I had a, a, an amazing example of what you've just said. So I had a client call and they felt they had missed this opportunity and they had actually spoken to some senior members. You know, I have to keep it very general as possible That's fine. in their team that should have represented them in a better light. Now, here's the thing. We are as strong as the people that we surround ourselves with. I'm, I'm so happy that this person called me because there was a big deal that they could have missed. Mm. Right. Mm. And I literally sat down. We had this core conversation and it turned out that I said, actually, you went wrong here and your camp should have said this. Do you realize that this is the awareness? And they went, oh, my God, I could see that. But because I was getting feedback from my support system mm. I believed what they were telling me and I thought I had lost everything mm. so they went back and they were just vulnerable do you know what they've done they simply said sorry mm. they simply said you know it, it depends what you mean by missing but this opportunity was for them to delve into a business opportunity it was massive so they mm. simply said you know what here's the thing I was going through some stuff um, can we just start off from scratch sometimes it's in our inability to be vulnerable and honest with ourselves that's what's going to set us back. I wonder what they're going to think if I go back and say, can I have another chance? Mm. I wonder what people are going to say if I do this. Forget about what people are going to say, because guess what? You wake up with yourself and you go to sleep with yourself, so you need to become your own best friend. Mm. So, number one, be honest with yourself and be transparent. Stop worrying about what everyone's going to say and think about you, because the truth is, if you're going to do that, you're going to live life allowing those people to dictate your life and the chances are you're not going to miss one opportunity you're going to miss them all yeah that does have a strong hold on on on, on how we think or process our thoughts doesn't it yes what absolutely people are going to say what they're going to think and should i really try again because i've missed opportunities. Yes. why don't i just try something else instead of trying again and see if it will work 
Well, exactly, Ronnie. And, you know, to be honest, the whole work that I work around is that I wanted to demonstrate this to the world as child's play. This is why I do what I do with children mm. and my children. Mm. So the essence is when we're talking about opportunities, we think it's just one hit one. It's like a wave and it is as vast as the sand and the beach and the sea. Now, we've got to understand that there is a plethora and abundance beyond our wildest dreams that surrounds us. Mm. Now, in order for us to have the mindset to detect that, how can every conversation be an opportunity how can every situation be an opportunity and this is why i struggle a bit to say like do you miss opportunities no you don't what you do miss is the connection to listen to yourself and how to get back up again because we can fall down a hundred but we can get up 101 and this is the essence is that if we are surrounded by opportunities what are we really miss them mm. amazing fantastic Please tell us a little bit about your what's your next project going on now so we just put that on <laughs> next project so um Brunel University and us, we're teaming up to do some wondrous things around the world and working with um, the RSA, Royal Society of Arts, mm -hmm. absolutely phenomenal um, fellows. Um, we've, oh, we've made a big announcement this week, actually. No, sorry, Sunday. I don't know what day it is. <laughs> so Paolo has actually made history by being the youngest ever member of a council called the Wisdom Council. He has just been invited into this council to advise men as old as 60. So it's, I really glad that you asked this because it's a mammoth example That's of well age, <laughs> age is timeless. Okay. Yeah. The other kids have all gone on a, a council for conscious, um, simply conscious kids council. Mm -hmm. And we are literally going to go global online to really touch the hearts and minds of families and children alike. And, you know, just be ready for this, guys. It really amazing. is child play. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, Sabrina. Oh, it was a pleasure. Likewise. Take forward, good care of yourself. Looking forward to taking the world. Yeah, let's take the world on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let's go and have some fun. Let's go and have some <laughs> fun. Right, you take care of yourself. And be good. And you. God Thank bless. You. Bye. Bye. Fantastic. That's amazing news. Well done. Well done, Paolo. That's, uh, that's great news. See? Just a, a little guy with, uh, with big dreams, eh? Fearless. And it's going to grow in that environment and just continue to grow and continue to take take up the challenges, you know. All right, I call our next fantastic guest. I'm really enjoying this. It's very educated. The Monday shows, the first day of the week. Yeah, whatever you're watching in the world, amazing. Please, number one thing, never give up on your opportunities. If even at the first time that you try, Hi, Shola, you live on there. How are you? Good afternoon, Ronnie. I'm fine. You? I'm buzzing, 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 buzzing. How's the weather and the network where you are? Yes, the weather's good. I don't know. How's the network? Are you hearing me loud and clear? I can hear you loud and clear. It's all good now. Please, Brilliant. Please introduce excellent, yourself. Excellent, excellent. Yes, yeah, so my name is Shola Ayodele. I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, I'm a husband of one wife. I'm a <laughs> mentor. <laughs> Uh, a motivational peak performance um, speaker. Um, yes, that's me. Fantastic. Today we're talking about life and tides wait for no one. So what's your view on the topic, first of all? Yeah, I mean, sometimes, I mean, I was in a uh, sort of sales environment for a good few years, about 20, 25 years, and um, we used to kind of use that kind of mo mindset to, to motivate uh, <laughs> motivate people and you know, sort of yank us out of our comfort zone sometimes, you know, so it can be a motivator, yeah? yeah. But I, I like to take more of a kind of uh, philosophical approach to Ronnie, because, you know, opportunities, I don't believe they, 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 they you know, they're, they're lost. Um, if I draw an experience from, from years ago, I didn't sort of follow the traditional route in terms of um, academic studies, yeah. so I didn't finish my A-levels and go straight to uni. Mm. I had a gap, um, quite a long, <laughs> long gap, I must say. Mm. Um, you know, but I did a lot of vocational studies and, and qualifications and so forth. So, mm. you know, I went back into academic studies, as it were, um, just a few years ago. Um, and I've just had a recent graduation, for example, yeah? Mm. And in... Oh, thank you. And in that studies, in that course of studies, John, I, 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 you know, I was doing a lot of work around different philosophers. And if I can share one particular philosopher, his name was Francis Bacon from the 1600s, yeah? yeah? I'll just give you a quote that he says, a wise man will make more opportunities than he finds. Mm. Yeah, a wise man will make more opportunities than he finds. So 
you know, that's to say that, you know, opportunities are never lost. I think just tapping, I just caught the last bit of what Serena was saying. Mm. You know, that we are surrounded, you know, by a plethora, by a sea of opportunities. Some of it come to us um, in one way, but then they come to us again, disguised in different ways. So, yeah, so it depends on how we position ourselves and how we, you know, look at what our goals are, you know, how we review and reset you know, and sort of um, get us restored to what, you know, what we're actually looking for, if, if we're discerning enough to realise what it is that we're looking for. I don't know if you remember the saying where he says, uh, opportunity only knocks but once. Yes. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of that. <laughs> I have heard of, I've heard of that saying, right? And, you know, as I said, people do use that, but it's more like a kind of quip, isn't it? As I said, I think if you use... You know, said in the beginning. I mean, we used to use that a lot in the, in the sales environment, really, just to whip us up into yeah. uh, some sort of energy to go and do, something, you know, to motivate us, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if we apply that to sort of general life, you know, in our relationships and so forth, again, I think that that kind of adage kind of shot down because, you know, again, in relationships, you can have you know, maybe had a, a bad relationship with the, with, with the same partner, yeah. you know, and then you know, review things and reset things and come back strong again. So. You know, I'm a believer. I'm a believer in second chance, definitely. Yeah. I mean, applying this to to relationship is it's a very. I, I like the way you link that together, because I find that you, there's loads of people who maybe they're in the the later part of their age at the moment, and they've gone through a divorce yeah. and they've broken up, and and That's they just right. feel that they can't get it back together again, or they can't find that they lost your opportunity, that they can't yeah. move on or get another partner that will make them happy. You know, mm. so so that's that's a big challenge. Yeah. It is, it is, um, and I, I think as you mentioned, as we get older, um, I know age doesn't automatically mean wisdom, <laughs> mm. but um, I do believe that it it gives us a certain kind of stillness. It gives us a certain kind of maturity. Yeah, you know, it gives us a certain kind of humility. It allows us to sort of review where we may have gone wrong, um, and uh, maybe where the other person has gone wrong, and then just come to some sort of cohesion sit down talk communicate big factor you know i believe that it gives us that that you know that platform to do some of those things in our kind of exuberant youth mm. you know maybe there was a lot of pride and, and uh, emotions you know flashing yeah. around that we yeah. would not have seen. yeah so i think yeah as, as we get older i think we can we're, we're kind of in a position to do that to mm. do that and then you know if there are children involved if there are younger ones us we want to provide that role model experience as well that you know role model uh, example so, so practically, and these are things that we yeah yeah sorry sorry to interrupt so practically yeah. how do we position ourselves to take advantage of these opportunities i think we so i think it's all about how you know what it is that we want how we you know how we're going to reset you know so it's about mindset again isn't it it's about our own individual mindsets as to you know again going back to the goals you know, not seeing that if we've not achieved a, a certain opportunity, we're not past one in particular. Mm. Does it mean that we've it? It's something in ourselves, you know, going back to, I think, one of your shows you did a few weeks ago on expectation. Mm. What is it that we see as an area that we've failed in? Have we have we actually failed, or does it mean that it's just coming later? Mm. You know, maybe we're more rounded to um, accept it, absorb it, and identify it, you know, and, and, and sort of uh, and step in it. So, as I said, the opportunity can come back at you in a different way. It can come disguised in a different form. It can come through through different people, through, from a different um, environment altogether. You know, so I don't think the opportunity is is lost. I say I think it's something that can can come back. It may be packaged again differently. See, we we just need to make up, make sure that we are we put ourselves in a posi- in a readyable position to take advantage of it when it comes again. Yeah, I think so. I think it's all about, you know, as you said, um, Ronnie, just being ready, uh, yeah. keeping that mindset tuned up, you know, being in the right network of people um, and, and really yeah, hanging on to that goal, really, important. really striving for that goal. Yeah. Sorry? So say that again. Go on. Yeah, I was saying about striving for that goal and really believing that that goal, if that goal that one has, if it's a real burning desire, mm. then we will sort of, um, you know, kind of be in that, that kind of waiting, in that holding place, if you like, you know, to sort of uh, be ready to identify it when that opportunity comes up, Fantastic. even though it's packaged, even though it's, it's viewed in a different way. Fantastic. I, I saw a link. You shared a link about your Real Men uh, program. Could real you talk. Ta- yes. Could you real tell talk, us a little yeah. bit about it before we go? 
Yeah, sure, Rafe. As I said before, we, we, are, we are talking about unlocking potential, unlocking youth potential, unlocking the potential um, men. Um, it's trying to be, we're looking at being a healing platform in the sense that, you know, men can come and discuss openly, you know, be transparent, you know, look at foundational issues so that we don't carry baggage on. And then, you know, the real um, ethos is to be able to give um, a positive role model experience to younger guys, younger people coming up, you know, hand on the baton, as it were. Mm. Um, and we're looking at them putting that and creating generational wealth. It's a, you know, that's another area that we've, we're looking at as men, um, looking at areas that affect us, affects our role as men anyway. Um, but yeah, it's all about really unlocking unlocking the potential. So we do we do this Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, no, you might, can I, can I share my link? Can I share my email? You got the details? Sorry, I've got I've got the details. And if the, if people you want to details, watch, how can they how can they watch it? How, how did they get on? Yeah, to so so it's a zoom it's a zoom link up. So if people want to uh, come on board, um, by all means, if you just email uh, realtalk zero two four seven at gmail dot com. That's realtalk zero two four seven at gmail dot com. The case of just sending us the details with an email, the um, zoom password on, and you know, welcome, join in, come and debate, come and discuss. Um, yeah, come and look at reforming and reestablishing the original blueprint of how we were supposed to be as guys. Amazing. Thank you so much and well done for your dream. I love it. And, and just don't give up and keep pressing. And, and mm. I, it's a very good idea. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thanks for your support, Ronnie. All we'll right. be having you back again soon, subject to your, your time, innit? I'm ready anytime. <laughs> anytime I'm ready. Brilliant. All the best. Good man. Thanks, Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Have a good day. Bye bye. Well, I love that, you know, when, when men can just sit down and just have a chat, you know, no pride, no trying to, no ego, you know, we just talk like men. You know? <laughs> Although I always do, though, you know, so I don't know how that's going to be different. All right, our next guest, uh, we're going to give our fantastic Cheryl a call. Uh, she's been very patient and an amazing lady. Right. What a smooth and beautiful, beautiful show today, you know, just learning about a lot of things. And thank you. Just want to say a big thanks to my guest, uh, Tony. A big thank you to Trust. Hi, Shara. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you today? I am buzzing and I'm calm and I'm thirsty. <laughs> even, even though the universe has been messing. <laughs> uh, the universe aligned correctly for me you know it just had a blip for one second <laughs> yeah exactly exactly Pretty amazing good. please tell us about yourself before we start hi my name's Cheryl Chapman I'm the co-author and the co-founder of the award-winning find your why foundation and the find your why book so you can be even more freaking awesome I know I know tell us about the find your why book uh, the Find Your Why book is really where we share the strategy that we uh, use to help you to find your why. Uh, so a lot of people say to us, well, what's a why? Um, and the why comes in two guises. It's why you're on the planet, the bigger purpose, if you like, uh, the agreement you made with yourself before you came here. And then the why is also why are you where you are right now? So what works brilliantly that you can do more of and what might need a little bit of tweaking to make you even more freaking awesome. So we need to connect while where we, where we are right now to why yes. we came yes. to achieve that. I like that connection. Okay, how do we get a book? It's on Amazon? Yeah, it's on Amazon, or you can go to uh, findyourwhyfoundation.com. Fantastic. Please leave a link for us later on on the link, and then uh, I'm, ho I'm hungry for reading books now, you know, so I'm... I'm good. feeling myself up with, with good, good, <laughs> okay, then, yeah, no, that. So what's your opinion about life and tides wait for no one? Well, I was, I was sort of laughing and that's what I was meaning when I said about <laughs> the universe messing because it was kind of like, well, you could have easily said, oh no, you know, we can't make the times that we said for today, mm. but actually you did something about it. <laughs> so there was an opportunity for this call to maybe be 10, 15 minutes earlier. But it didn't matter because because what you did was you actually did something else because you knew what you wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, yes, there will be missed opportunities, but maybe they're not missed. And I think it was your, it was the first lovely lady I was listening to earlier on, mm -hmm. you know, who said maybe that just wasn't the right time for you. Right. Mm -hmm. For that opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so in the book, at Find Your Why, what we do is we go through three, three processes. So the first one is awareness. 
who you are, why you are, where you are. But it's also about, you know, where are you now? And then the second part is about intention. So what do you want? Because the truth of the matter is sometimes I think that the opportunities come and you don't have them, uh, and I'm going to use the same word, aligned with what your actual true purpose is. So maybe you don't realize it's so important to you at that time. Um, I remember there was a speaking competition on because I'm an international speaker as well. Yeah. I remember there was a speaking competition on. I turned into the man I should have married in the 80s. Very competitive, quite masculine. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there was competition. I need to win. Yeah. Um, and I still believe to this day that I actually spoke the best on that day. Um, but it doesn't matter anymore because I didn't win. I was going to say, was, did you win? <laughs> I was like, whoa, what went on here? Um, but here's the interesting thing. If I had won, then my life would not be the way it is now because that would have come too easy. So what happened was I didn't win. And even though, you know, I, mean, I'm, I, I say I know I was the best speaker on the day with a bit of tongue in cheek there. Um, what happened was I then thought, well, do I really want this? Because I think if an opportunity passes you and you don't really want it, then you're just going to go, oh, that's opportunity missed. And, oh, that was it, you know rest of my life is rubbish but i thought no actually i it really it really means something to me not to win a competition but i do want to speak that's mm. what i want to do mm. so then i think this is where your second and your third speaker then came in because it's then about if your intention is this is what i really want this really feels like it's my calling then you have to do something about it so you know i i, I upskilled if you like i practiced more um, I read more books. I went to more, um, you know, coaching around uh, speaking. I, I invested more time in what I really, really wanted. And therefore, what then happened is, uh, you know, awareness became this is what I want. Mm. I shared with others this is what I want. My intention was set not only for me, but also for the other people around me. And then I manifested it. And, mm. and manifest isn't just sitting, praying, you know, waiting for God, Allah, the universe or whoever mm. Mm. To, to, to deliver it to your door. I have another saying for manifest, which is um, I'll be I'll be clean. Move your ass. <laughs> you have to get into action. I love that. So, um, you know, so the so the thing really is, you know, the missed opportunity for me, I think, is like a little um, flashing light bulb for you. So, how much do you want what you missed? Because I think the truth is, we only regret the things we don't do hmm. in life. Hmm. But let's be honest, there will be opportunities that we miss. We're not looking. We're not ready. You know, whatever that is. But when you know that that is a missed opportunity, that's the time to say. What do I really want? Did I really want that? And if I did, why didn't I get it? Do I need to upskill? Do I need to retrain? Do I need a coach, you know, a mentor? What is it about me that wasn't right for that opportunity? Or do I say, actually, when I think about it, I didn't really want it. It was the wrong thing. I was just being competitive, for example. So you can let that one go and then wait for something that's more in keeping with what you really want. Mm. That's so my what, thoughts on the matter. That's fantastic. I mean, when we... Uh, when we lose, when we miss an opportunity. I, I love the way that you've em re-emphasized that just sitting there and being positive and not taking any action doesn't manif doesn't make the goal or the dream to manifest. You're just, just going to get no. more hungry, I think, <laughs> in my yeah. own terms. I'm trying to think of something, and I can't think of anything at all. I, I mean, you know, I'm happy to be co corrected, but I can't think of anything all uh, at all that we do in our life that we can do on our own. So if mm. we can't do anything on our own, I mean, I mean, you know, I'm talking about like we wouldn't even be here without two people doing something. Right. right. So, I mean, you know, in terms of like achieving a goal or getting what we want, you know, going places, you know, it all relies on other people. Mm. And so how can you sit it on your own in your own cave, if you like, or under a tree and expect anything to happen without you really moving towards that? place you know help asking for other people for help and guide and supporting other people like you know we're, we're not here to be on our own we're here to be with other people and help and serve and support and so it's like just sitting in your own thoughts it's a really great place to start yeah. but i do believe you have you know we wouldn't be having this conversation yeah. um you know and and so i wouldn't be reaching other people you wouldn't be reaching other people we're doing it together right yeah. it's collaboration mm. 
And so that's why I think, you know, it is about, you know, getting out there and meeting people and doing things and learning new skills from other people, you know, reading a book that somebody else wrote, you know, th th these people have got into action mm. to help people to really get to where they want to be. If you were to suggest simple ways of how we can reposition ourselves to take advantage of these tides, what would mm -hmm. you suggest? So I think you have to know what it is you really want, what lights you up. And for me, you know, we teach our clients, you know, it's all about the feeling. So I'm, I'm, I'm not one for writing fours and against lists. That mm. doesn't really make too much sense, mm. although it's a, it's a reasonable place to start. So what do you really want? Now, that is the key because <laughs> a lot of people don't know what they really want, right? So you can start with what you don't want. So if you know what you don't want, then that will help you to go towards what you do want. So, for example, do you want to work for somebody else? For some people, that will be a big no. Mm. That means, hmm, so you want to work on your own. Great. How does that feel? How is that going to look? Because if you know what you want, then you can say to yourself, OK, so this opportunity that's now in front of me right now, is this in keeping with the intention that I set for my life? Mm. Because if it isn't, you can say, no, thank you. That's not going to serve me. Thank you so much for the opportunity. It's not a missed opportunity then. It's an opportunity that you chose because it wasn't in keeping with your why. Somebody once said that when you can identify what you love the most, that equates to what you really want to achieve, what you've been created to achieve in life. Yes, I agree. And also look back on your life when you were a child before you got covered over with everybody else's truth <laughs> and everybody else's belief. And as a child, there it is already there what your why is. I remember when I was like nine years, 10 years, 11, I used to hold my pen and I'll just yeah. be talking around the house. Like as if I was, yeah. I'll just imagine myself on the stage. You yeah, know? Really. and my my parents always used to look at me. What are you doing? Go and do your homework. I said, Yeah, in a minute. What are you doing outside? They come out. They just see me talking to myself. They said, so they started thinking I was losing my head. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to just picture myself on a big stage, talking to millions of people, impacting yeah. their lives. I was just nine years old. <laughs> yeah, good. And so if you if you look at if you look at some other areas of your life, so when you were five, what were you doing? And when you were fifteen, what were you doing? Or when you were ten, or you know, all these aspects, there will be something that links each of those themes, which is all part of your why. So my guess, my guess, Ronnie, because I work on five different um, types of people, mm. my guess would be that you are an architect, because architects are here to guide other people. Um, I would imagine that there's a part of your design that, that shows about you sharing, guiding, leading other people mm -hmm. in, in your own unique way. And look what you're doing. You know, you've got a show, you've got guests coming on, you know, your show's going to be going out to who? Like millions of people potentially, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So like across the world. So this is you already doing what you love. And, and, you know, as long as you can say, I love doing what I'm doing, then you know that you're on the right path. Amazing. Thank you so much for that. Always a pleasure to have you. And uh, you're welcome. Please, again, one more time, give us the uh, tell us about your book and how can my audience get access to the book, please? Yeah, so it's called Find Your Why to Become Freaking Awesome. It's on Amazon, uh, not to be mistaken with the lovely Simon Sinek's. We are Cheryl Chapman and Marion Bevington. And you can also get it from www.findyourwhyfoundation.com. Amazing. Thank you so much and looking forward to speaking to you Thank next you. week. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye, Ronnie. Bye, everybody. Bye. Oh, what a great show. Great audience. Great people. People with great minds who always want to impact and make a difference. And I just want to say a huge, 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 huge thank you to you all because you made today very special. You made it special because you have invested your time and your energy. So much time and so much energy to make a difference in the people who are watching in their lives. I know one thing, it takes one word to make that impact in your life, just one word. You may have had listened to six different guests, but one person must have said something to motivate you, to drive you further, to educate you, to drive you further. That's the essence of this program. The program is to educate you, to motivate you, to drive your dreams. That's it, you know? So when you listen to the show, have fun, have a laugh by the back of your mind, just know one thing i need to walk away from this program taking one thing that would impact and change my life 
all the speakers talked about different things today, but one thing that is that, that was resounded, that kept coming up over and over again, you got to take action. You got to take action. You got to take action. I said that three times, so you don't forget. You can say the positive things. You can think it. You can believe it. But you got to do. If you look at, look at Deontay Wilder, Deontay Wilder, when he was the heavyweight champion, kept saying, say, believe it, and receive it. He was practicing to box. He was fighting. He was taking. He was making the move. Yes, he got beat by the other boxer, but he made the effort. He took the action. And that's all it is. You got to take that action. When you have that belief in your mind, when you have that energy in your mind, when you have that determination, when you have all the positivity, but you don't do anything, they just fade away. Nothing happens. No one's going to come to you in your living room while you're watching TV and give you the, the contract that you need or the job that you need or the experience that you need to position yourself. For you to be able to put yourself in positions where you can meet people that will help you align with your dream, you have to take the action. It's like what Shira was just saying. And we never met before. We only connected through the television program. If I had not started this program, we may have never met. So with the other 50 or 60 other people that are on our contact list, if I had not started this television program, maybe we, never, we may have never met. So those actions, that I've, the action that I've taken to start this platform has connected me with more people. That's a simple example I just thought I'd give to show to you that your actions that you take for, towards your dream, they bring rewards. If you don't take the action, you don't get no reward. I love the context of which uh, our first, our second speaker, uh, Timothy, said. He said everything happens. There's a time and season for everything. You miss that season. Yes, get yourself ready for the next season. Don't just sit on sit on your butt and then think that oh, I missed that opportunity. Nothing's gonna happen. No, you missed it. Get on with it. I love what happened today. Today I planned everything. That oh, the, sh the program is going to start then at four o'clock. But all of a sudden there was technical problems. I, could, I even sent text messages to my guests. I said, "Listen, we might have to postpone the show." But I said, "No." After I did that, I said, no, "I'm going to find out what the problem is." We just in ten minutes, I was calling different people, checking different, reading different things quickly to try and correct what the issue is because I never, I didn't know what it was, but I learned something new. And my determination took me through that. Never give up on your dream. Never give up when you face challenges. Never put your hands up and say, oh, it's over for me. No, it's not over. It's only over when we die and go to our grave. And even when we go to our grave, what's going to be marked on your tombstone? Oh, here lies that person that tried with all those dreams and all those visions that never got anything done. Nah, that's not you. That's not your portion. Your portion is to drive on opportunities come and they keep coming we create them if i recall correctly somebody said something somebody read was that uh ayo who read the script that we create opportunities we create them every single moment of our lives we create opportunities thank you so much my name is ronnie jacobs and as i always say never let anyone tell you you can't achieve your dreams your dreams could be can be so big that when you explain it to some people they just won't get it because it's so big for them to understand. <laughs> I wish I wish above all things that you will prosper and you do well in your dreams. All again, all the way from me again is Ronnie Jacobs and I love you. And please never give up on that dream. God bless you and have a great week. Bye.